Sorry. The title was again largely a, a working title which kind of stuck as it um, progressed through and actually it follows on quite nicely from the couple of little bits of discussion there. So um, I wanted to think about, um, started off with student perceptions of, of theory from both the, the beginning, <laughs> both the beginning of uh, the module, and then at the the end of the module as well. So get some initial um, anticipatory thoughts based around kind of like the title of the module and what they think is going to be included. Um, yeah, shit came up uh, a couple of times. Uh, fairly indifferent things as well, though. So. Um, You've got grey and, and dull and fluff. Um, just trying to bin these into different categories, kind of 50-50, even negative in the first year, uh, missed the year, and then the second year I did it a bit, <coughs> a bit less. Um, trying to interpret them a bit more into kind of, um, is it worthwhile, is it fictional, then fairly, fairly difficult to decide based around the actual words which came out. Unfortunately, um, the, the best one which I had was a conversion of shit into not shit. <laughs> not enough people decided to write not shit on their, their summary um, interpretation, so it doesn't come up just as big as, as the shit one. But we got, again, some fairly indifferent ones like okay-ish and still just ish, odd. Um, but very, very different, but generally a bit of a swing from what you might call negative approaches or negative interpretations to slightly more positive, but also an increase in the generally indifferent ones. So things like um, odd, uh, hot was to do with the room, it was always roasting in that room. <laughs> um, opinions, it's just very, very, um, fairly indifferent <coughs> attitudes towards the, the topic at the end of the module potentially. So then I thought, okay, what about um, people that are actually teaching theory? So what if, oh no, sorry, there is one section between. And um, so I thought maybe I can follow this up with um, a questionnaire, get some feedback on the actual um, relevance of, of what people thought of a the theory to their wider degree program after going on, on field work. Um, there might be somebody in the room that remembers some of these comments because they were the one person that actually responded, mm -hmm. which again gives a kind of impression on the general, to some degree, indifference to the, the whole subject. Get no response to this, but um, no, no direct influence on the, the methods or interpretation of fieldwork could be interesting but more aware of their own um, biases when they're doing that fieldwork. So it brings up more of a kind of petrol thing about everything being situationally constrained, which is good to get across. Um, I liked the, the appreciation of the historical emphasis in the theory, so they can avoid being pigeonholed as such into different um, schools or categories. So they avoid being pigeonholed in the field as a processionalist or a post-processionalist. They can have a wider approach to understand sites and the interpretations there. Again, from a, the undergrad perspective, um, from a master's level that came into, into Bradford and didn't have the theory in Bradford, um, coming from an American perspective, thought it was very difficult to get into. So it almost turned them off going into academia actively. So it pushed them more into the, into the field um, and emphasised the fact that it can't just be based around um, abstract theories. They need to have the database there to work as well. So trying to get that linking of theory and data at the same time to appreciate the, the benefits of understanding theory at the undergraduate level. Um, and then on from this, obviously a few years ago we had the um, Bintliff and Pierce book, The Death of Archaeological Theory, and then in 2015 in Tag in Glasgow, sorry, Glasgow. not Edinburgh, yeah. I've, I've, mis, I've mis, mis, mislabeled it, it um, Tag in uh, BAA in Glasgow. <coughs> there was supposed to be a round table on the teaching of theoretical archaeology, but nobody <laughs> turned up. So it didn't actually, didn't run. Um, 
which kind of prompted my, my thinking about actually is it um, just the undergraduates that have this kind of indifference to, to theoretical concepts or is it also within some elements of um, the academic teaching staff or administrative staff or um, kind of the industrial sector itself as well, certainly in my field. So following on from the question before about any teaching pedagogy or theory, did a bit of a questionnaire sent out to all of the UK universities and Ireland universities where I could identify people responsible for teaching of theoretical modules to try and understand how theory is taught in the undergraduate degree program. So this is um, a breakdown of how it's taught by year. So the two expanded ones are multi-years, so across all three years, across years one and two. But generally people included in the first two years of the degree program. So it gets in at the start of the, the degree. Some only start to introduce it in the third year. Kind of might be interpreted a bit late on in the degree program itself. If we look at um, the titles of the modules and we get the traditional range of um, keywords. So theory, archaeology, theoretical, archaeology, normal sorts of keywords um, and one which again comes up is uh, history and that was one of the initial keywords that people used to describe <coughs> archaeology from the undergraduate level theory modules was um, historical so the original idea of theory as an interpretation was it was a historical um, subject a historical module as opposed to anything active and on ongoing at the present time uh, thinking about the modes of delivery, so is it um, in a dedicated module, is it spread across multiple modules of no coherent internal structure, or is it a combination of, of both? Um, better roughly even split really on the responses, slightly more identifying as using both methods, which is uh, good from a pedagogic practice to get the whole integration going on, some with the dedicated module and some with an entirely dispersed delivery, each of which have their own individual benefits. So if, um, if we look at um, dedicated modules, then it gives that specific focus. It can have the spiral teaching effect <laughs> going on. Um, if we look at the dispersed delivery, then a lot of the, the reading or the research can be dispersed out to independent study. A lot of the historical background research is quite suitable for that. Um, but you can get a much wider context of the setting if it's dispersed across different modules to give that wider perspective. Um, but that does come with a potential variability in the degree to which people include the theoretical concepts. Obviously, if um, certain people are not particularly interested in the theory, then it will become less emphasised for uh, specific modules. If they're more interested, maybe more included. And if we look at the um, people identifying as teaching it through both methods, then I like the fact that it reduces this risk of compartmentalisation, so you get that fuller perspective of the relevance of theory in the wider teaching practice. If we think about um, why, why people said it was important that undergraduates are taught theory or given teaching in theory, then a lot of the similar things come up in the keywords that we identified at the beginning to um, the student perspective. So it's getting across the, the history and the origin of the disciplines, um, how archaeology fits in with other disciplines, Coming back to the student responses, so awareness of the evolution of how we think and how that might be influenced by our own personal setting. Uh, can problematize current approaches, so it gets the aspect of what we're doing today into the, the problematic aspect. Um, some people said it creates theory literate students, which is an interesting idea. <laughs> It might do. I'm not totally sure I'm thoroughly theory literate, but uh, 
certainly getting there potentially. Um, but also a fact that gets across um, assumptions which are made in the general narratives by the public which occasionally have um, unfounded situations in interpretation. So it could be highlighting areas where there's a general mismatch between the public understanding of sites and what we are intending to achieve as, as archaeologists. So that's, that's some of the benefits of including theoretical archaeology but people teaching theory identified. But I also wanted to um, expand out a little bit more to think about what happens in the commercial world. So if we're doing undergraduate degree programs to train archaeologists in the field, then what impact does the theoretical concept have on the field based upon the student response said that it has no impact directly on their, on their practice in the field? But if we think about um, what we actually do, then we know that even very simple things like um, context records have a lot of theoretical input into their definition from the very beginning and how we approach sites based upon our immediate interpretations will influence what can be done later on. So this came up from a discussion I had with um, a guy from Worcestershire talking about um, the potential of recutting ditches and how that could be part of a, a wider social aspect. but defining ditches as, as linear features on the context record and the sampling strategy we employ straight away immediately limits how much we can potentially theorize that later on because we don't have that evidence base there. So potentially that disjoint between theoretical understanding or thinking at the undergraduate level and to the field level creates a um, limitation on what we can <coughs> actually do in future research strategies. <coughs> and if we look at things such as um, the Archaeology Skills Passport, which you can get from archaeologyskillspassport.org potentially, <laughs> um, and the CFA slash University Archaeology UK um, accreditation documents, there's very little in there that actually directly relates to theoretical principles. It's all field skill based with no emphasis on the background theoretical understanding or theoretical concepts. So how does the teaching of, of theory relate to the wider profession and to the accreditation scheme? And that's not something I can answer. That is just a, a question which I kick out there for people to, to think about and hopefully um, we can discuss around later on throughout the session. But coming back to, the, um, to the, the title, I think as Penny alluded to, then everyone already said, well actually my students don't hate archaeology. Uh, theoretical archaeology, hopefully we don't hate archaeology at all. <laughs> <laughs> archaeology degrees, just don't hate theoretical archaeology. Um, I don't think they do, but potentially they're more indifferent than actually hating, and that indifference could actually be even worse than, than hating a concept. It's just a lack of in, engagement, a lack of appreciation with the wider theoretical issues. How we change that is um, complicated, um, especially if we're going back to the teaching of the uh, origins of archaeology and the origins of theoretical development because you can't ask people to go and think like a cultural historian because obviously we know we've moved on since then. So how do you get across these um, very, very critical concepts which we've just moved so far on from that you can't get back into that mindset particularly. So it becomes very much a, a narrative teaching, a historical teaching which is difficult to provide engagement with. And if we think about the more recent theoretical developments, then 
they're founded on other things and you have to have that basis there to start off with but getting people into actively doing research based around those concepts again is a fairly difficult thing and quite a limited undergraduate degree timetable which has got ever more constraints coming in as we all know and to, to follow up on the um, the indifference I think <coughs> the lack of um, responses somewhat is a, is a key <laughs> symptom of that in the, the understanding uh, the willingness to contribute how it influenced their own undergraduate experience but also I think we need to assess whether theoretical concepts are actually valued or undervalued within a wider commercial sphere and then how we can go about rectifying that to create a better balance in the undergraduate degree between theoretical and purely skills-based activities. And I think that is the last slide. Yes, thank you.